Hello everyone! With this video, we're going to continue the series on topics pertaining to shear stress, normal stress, principal stress, and principal direction. In today's episode, we will show you how to draw the so-called Mohr circle and how to read out the principal stresses and principal directions. I'm intentionally saying reading out instead of calculating because if you want to calculate the precise values, you need to use the formulas from the previous sections. Mohr's circle merely allows you to get a good estimate of the values depending on how precisely you draw the circle. We will do three things in this video. First, in part A, we will of course draw the Mohr circle and outline the steps needed to have a successful drawing of the circle. In part B, we will determine or actually read out the values for sigma 1 and sigma 2, the principal normal stresses, alpha star, which is the angle by which the coordinate system or the cut must be rotated to have normal stresses attain their maximum magnitudes. We will also determine tau max, which is the maximum or the principal shear stress, and alpha double star. Alpha double star is the direction by which, you, by which you need to rotate the coordinate system to have the shear stress attain its maximum absolute value. And in part C, we will determine the stresses for a rotation angle of the coordinate system of plus 30 and minus 30 degrees. Part C will be done in a separate video later, because Part C takes a little longer than either Part A or Part B. Okay, to draw more circle, you first need your three stress values. Sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. Sigma x is minus 50 megapascal, sigma y 20 megapascal and tau is equal to 30 megapascal. The underlying uh, directions of the stresses that are assumed mathematically are drawn here. So if the stress values are positive, the actual directions point in the same directions as the arrows here. And if some, of, if some of the stress values are negative, such as sigma x, the actual direction of sigma x points towards the body on both sides. So on the right side, um, let me actually draw it. I'm just mentioning it because some people might get confused between the actual stress direction and the assumed stress direction or the mathematically assumed stress direction. And let me draw in the actual direction of sigma x, which points exactly in the opposing direction. It's getting a little uh, tight here. So I'm just going to label this as sigma x actual because the magnitude of sigma x is negative and as such you have a reversal of the mathematically assumed direction taking place. And we have the actual sigma x value on this side and therefore you end up with the compressive stress. Compressive because the two stress vectors point towards the body on both sides. Okay, to draw more circle, you need to label two points on the coordinate system, point one and point two. The location of point one is defined as sigma x and tau, tau xy. So on the x-axis, which is the sigma axis in our case, you need to locate your sigma x value of minus 50 megapascal and on the tau axis, which is the y-axis, you have 
30 megapascal. And the coordinate system on which we're gonna draw the Mohr circle is set up such that one square on the sketch here corresponds to a stress value of 10 megapascal. So one more time, if you go one step up or down or to the right or to the left, uh, you pass a stress difference of 10 megapascal. We have our two points. And by the way, point two is located at sigma y, which is 20 megapascal and minus tau. Let's go ahead and mark the location of point one. Sigma x is minus 50 megapascal, so it's going to be on in the negative region on the sigma axis. And since each square represents a step of 10 megapascal, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So somewhere on this axis will be the point 1. And now we need to find the tau coordinate. Tau is 30 megapascal, so 30 megapascal means you need to go three steps up and you end up here. Oops, let me, let me make this point a little bigger. So this is P1 and point 2 is located at sigma y. Sigma y is 20 megapascal, positive. So it's going to be somewhere here and minus tau xy would therefore be minus 30 megapascal. So it's going to be from the origin of the coordinate system, two steps to the right and three steps down. So here's the location of point, th point two. Okay. And in the next step, what you need to do is to connect these two points by a straight line. Okay, so that straight line connects point one with point two. And the intersection between this diagonal line and the sigma axis marks the center of Mohr's circle as well as the mean normal stress or the average normal stress sigma m. Sigma m stands for the mean normal stress. And if you use this scale that I have already outlined you will find that the magnitude of the mean normal stress must be roughly minus 15 megapascal. So let me uh, record it just for reference. Sigma m is equal to minus 15 megapascal. Why is it negative? Because sigma m is in the negative sigma region. Okay, in the next step, we're going to draw the Mohr circle in a fashion where the perimeter of the circle runs through the points P1 and P2. Let's give it a try. Well, obviously, drawing the circle electronically is much easier than doing it manually, isn't it? All right, here is the Mohr circle. And 
because the principal normal stresses are the normal stresses with the maximum magnitudes, they must lie on the circle perimeter at the farthest distances from the circle center, from the circle center on the sigma axis. So one of the principal stresses must lie here at this point. Let me grab the hand so that you can see it. So one of the principal stresses must be here and the other principal stress must lie here on the sigma axis. And when I say principal stress, I mean specifically the principal normal stress. So how do we identify where is sigma 1 and where is sigma 2? There is a rule you need to abide whereby sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2. And where does this rule come from? Very simple, as you remember from the previous videos when we discussed the principal stresses, you saw this formula for the principal normal stresses. And this formula for sigma 1 and sigma 2 is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus minus the expression behind the square root. And because you have to add and to subtract the term under the square root from this expression, it is automatically the case that sigma 1, which is computed by adding the term behind the square root, is greater than sigma 2, which is obtained by subtracting this part from this. So this rule comes in quite handy. And since sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2, it is true that this spot here is sigma 1. So I'm gonna put a vertical, um, little vertical bar and mark this as sigma 1. And sigma 2 is here. And the magnitudes, as I said at the beginning, you can read them out if you use the scale. So sigma 1 is therefore roughly equal to, let's see, 1, 2, 3, I would say 3.1 or 3.15. So let's just make it 3. Uh, third, sorry, not 3.1, but 31, because we have 3.1 squares, and each square is 10 megapascal, and sigma 1 is going to be 31 megapascal. And sigma 2 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I would say minus 61 megapascal. Okay, uh, attention, that's a mistake that you might do as well. I just did it. Put a minus sign here because this location is in the negative sigma region. So it must be minus 61 megapascal. Uh, don't forget that. Okay, so with the help of more circle, we have estimated the magnitudes of the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2. And again, I just said estimated because if you want to compute the values exactly, you have to resort to the formulas that I have just shown uh, for a few seconds on this side. You should know that if the normal stresses attain their maximum values, so if you have principal normal stresses, the shear stress is zero. And that's, that's because if you look at where your principal normal stresses are located, you will see that it's on the sigma axis and the, the corresponding tau value is zero. If you are somewhere 
right on the sigma axis. Next on our plan is to determine the angle alpha star by which the coordinate system must be rotated so that the normal stresses become the principal normal stresses, where they, where they attain their maximum absolute values. And to learn more about the details of the rotation of the coordinate system, I would recommend that you watch one of the previous videos on this issue, if you haven't done so already. I will just show you how to read out the angle from Mohr's circle. For this, you need to know that the angle between the sigma axis and the line connecting the center of the circle with point 1 is 2 times alpha star. Let me write it down. This angle here between the sigma axis and this line, which connects sigma m with p1, is 2 times alpha star. And if you use an instrument to measure that angle, well, I don't have an instrument right here on this electronic board, but if you have an instrument, you will find that the angle 2 times alpha is equal to 140 degrees. If 2 times alpha star is equal to 140 degrees, that means that the standalone angle alpha star must be equal to 140 divided by 2, which is 70 degrees. In 70 degrees, that's the angle by which you need to rotate the coordinate system so that the normal stress magnitudes reach their maximum. And one more thing. If the location of point P1 is above the sigma axis, as it is the case here, you measure the angle between the sigma axis and the line connecting sigma m and p1 counterclockwise, as done here, and the angle value is then positive. If the location of p1 is below the sigma axis, the angle between the sigma axis and the line sigma m to p1 is going to be clockwise and the corresponding angle will be negative. So, for instance, if the points in our example were reversed, in that P1 would be located here and P2 would be here, your measured angle 2 times alpha would be minus 40 degrees between the sigma axis and this line, which in the Set scenario would be from sigma m to p1 in this direction. So your angle would be my uh, your angle two times alpha star would be minus 40 degrees. Well, and alpha star standalone would be then 20 degrees. Now the only missing information that we need to find is the direction of sigma one and sigma two. Here, it is the case that the angle alpha star refers to the direction of sigma 1 relative to the sigma axis. You could also draw the, dire the direction of sigma 1 by connecting sigma 2 with the point P1. Yes, if you want to find the direction of sigma 1, you need to look at the opposite side and connect sigma 2 with P1. Let me show you. So that's the direction of sigma 1, which is obtained by connecting sigma, sigma 2 with p1. And if you measure the angle to the sigma axis, you will see that the angle is 70 degrees, basically 
what we found for alpha star. And as I said, that's the angle for sigma 1. And the angle for sigma 2 is found by connecting sigma 1 with p1. So in analogy to what I did before, to find the direction of sigma 2, I need to connect sigma 1 with p1. And the direction will be perpendicular to sigma 1. And if you want to find the numerical angle of sigma 2, you would have to add 90 degrees to 70 degrees, which would get you 160 degrees. And remember that these directions are the mathematically positive directions. Sigma 1 is positive, so the actual direction of sigma 1 is then pointing in the same direction as this arrow, but for sigma 2, because the value is negative, the actual direction will be oriented in the opposing direction. Okay? At last, we need to determine the principal shear stress, tau max, and the angle alpha double star. The angle alpha, uh, alpha double star, that's the angle by which the coordinate system must be rotated so that the shear stress attains its maximum value. Well, in analogy to normal stresses. A principal stress always means that the stress reaches its maximum possible absolute value. Finding tau max is very simple. You just check what is the highest tau value that the perimeter of the circle ever reaches in this coordinate system. And that's actually right here. So the principal shear stress, tau max, is on this level. I will label it as tau max. And let's estimate its magnitude. So 10, 20, 30, 40, I would say around 47 megapascal. And the value is positive because it's in the positive tau region. This is how you obtain the magnitude of tau max and to determine the uh, angle alpha double star there is a simple recipe. First you draw a line from the center of the circle downwards at the right angle. So you just draw a vertical line from sigma m to the perimeter of the circle. Essentially, that's your radius of Mohr circle. And then you measure the angle between that line, which I'm just going to label as r, because it's the radius of Mohr circle, and the line connecting sigma m and p1. In our situation, that angle would be measured this way. Oh, it could look cleaner, I admit, but um, it's not the worst. <laughs> so, uh, that angle is 2 times alpha double star. So, in analogy to what we had for normal stresses, the angle for uh, well the angle at which the shear stress reaches its maximum is 2 times alpha double star and that angle if you perform the measurement is equal to 
230 degrees. And because 230 degrees is equal to 2 times alpha double star, it is the case that finding alpha double star would require you to divide that angle by half. So I'm going to quickly jot it down. Alpha double star is equal to 115 degrees. And again, that's the angle by which you have to rotate the coordinate system to have the shear stress reach its maximum magnitude. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I admit that this was quite a lengthy episode, but I hope that it was helpful and resourceful. I bid farewell to you, and I hope you're gonna be back with us.